La música de Harry Fry. What's going on beautiful people? Thank you for returning back to the Perspective Series on therootwave.com. Today I have Fanesha Fabre. Please say hello to the audience. Let us know where we can find you. Hi guys, my name is Fanesha Fabre and you can find me everywhere online, Instagram, Twitter, my actual webpage, Fanesha Fabre, and then webpage is FanishaFabreArt.com. Awesome, I really appreciate you uh, being on the channel today. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to speak to you because not only are you super talented, but you're also seem to continually build momentum for yourself. And I think that's very important. 2020, okay. I think that's one of those lessons that's going to be for all of us where it's, we have to put in the work. Yeah. And I've seen you put in the work. <laughs> so <laughs> if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about your work and yes. then also a little bit of how you got started, please. Sure. So I'm an illustrator. I also do like handmade goods, like pins, stickers, and stuff like that. I was initially a musician. So I did music for about 12 years. And I wrote songs. I worked with Harry Fraud. I'm, most of you know who Harry Fraud is, an amazing producer. Um, and then I kind of fell out of love with, with music because it's, it's a really hard industry for women to be in, especially back back then when, when I was in there and still now. But back then, you know, now you have the Me Too movement, women can speak up a little bit more. So I kind of stayed away from from music for a while and then I made my transition to, to the arts, which I, I was already doing when I was doing music because I was doing my own album artwork and stuff like that. And um and when I fell out of love with music, I was like, Well, you know, I still can do art. I of I've always loved doing art and that was kind of like I'm not gonna say a backup plan because I really was not expecting that. It was just, just like a, a, a nice surprise that I was able to transition from one thing to the other and, and have some success doing it. Now, that I would assume that, that that transition was easy for you because you've always been a naturally creative person, would you say? Right. And and also because I was, I was while I was doing music, I was also uh, illustrating. So, but it wasn't like the main thing that I was doing. It was just... In addition to my music, you know, creating album art for myself, posters and things like that for other people. Um, so it was easy, an easy transition also because that was the first thing I ever did when it came to the art. It was actual like drawing. And then I went to music and then I went back to drawing. Now, what was uh, growing up like for you in the creative sense? Was that a, a helping hand for you? Well, my my whole family is, uh, is full of artists. Like my father's a painter, he's a well-known Dominican painter. My mom was one of his students. My brother knows how to draw. My sister knows how to draw. So it was always welcomed to do that at home. Um, but it was almost like one that it was expected, right, for us to kind of do that. And so there was like that pressure of either following up following in, in my father's footsteps or and I think maybe that's why I kind of stayed away from it for a while um but it was welcomed it wasn't it wasn't like I was in a household where they were like okay you want to be an artist uh you have to go get a nine to five you cannot do this type of work uh it was welcome because my father is a big art uh, a big time like pusher of the art he always used to tell me don't work for anybody else. You're an artist, blah, blah, blah. Good work for yourself. Um, my mother was more of like a, a conventional person. I never was that way, but my mom was always like, you know, you know, go get a nine to five. She didn't force it on me, but it was kind of like, like an unspoken thing where well, she was more traditional. Um, so I grew up with those two things, but it was never really looked down on from my parents. I was always kind of like, 
okay, you want to do art? That's fine. Uh, explore. But then in the back right there, all the, always in the back was like, but, you know, like from my mom's side, but if it doesn't work out, then you can go get a nine to five and blah, blah, blah. But I've always had support from people. Um, with the music, not so much. With the music was a little bit different. Yeah. Now, um, a, a big part of what I do in my interviews is I try to have people look at things from a different perspective. Right. Right now, we were talking about you growing up and having that availability of that creative right. possibility. Um, I always felt like I was a creative person, but I lived in a household of immigrant parents that didn't care right. about any of that stuff. Like, it was just like, there was no, what? Yeah. You're being creative? Right. Yeah. So now, as an older man, I'm, you know, a wiser man. I am de developing my creativity even more. I've always tried to, but it was always, you know, in the background, and I'm trying to do that now. Right. I do have a lot of people who watch me who have children. Mm -hmm. Just give me an idea of someone who isn't a creative but has a child that may be creative what's a good way to kind of get them going it's funny because my cousin's my cousin's wife which is also my cousin I love her very much she had me um give a class to a kid that comes from a household like this uh it's, it's actually her niece and you know the parents are not artistic but the girl the little girl she's like eight or nine she really is like almost like gifted, I would say, because she understands things about art that a lot of adults don't understand. So I took my time just kind of, I want to, I wouldn't say evaluating her, but seeing where she was at in the spectrum of like knowledge, right? I would say to any parent is that, okay, because I think that a lot of parents feel that when a, 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 their child wants to be an artist, that there's going to be a lot of struggle. Um, that is with anything that you want to do in life. That's the first thing. Like that is part of the deal. Like if you want to do something for yourself and if you want to do something that, um, is probably out of the norm, there's going to be struggle, right? That, that doesn't, it's not exempt. It's not just artists, right? So that's one thing that they have to get out of their head that, you know, people, they're going to suffer that financially is not a lucrative thing. It is because I'm, I've been living off of it for three years. Now you just have to work really hard for it, like with anything else, right? Um, if they don't understand, because the, the thing is that being an artist is, is such a an experience. And unless you are an artist, you don't understand that, right? So it's hard for some parents to understand what it is that an artist goes through. You know, there's emotional stuff that we go through because we create from emotion, right? Um, I would say if you don't understand the lifestyle or what it entails to be an artist, right? Get someone in their life that does to cultivate that. You know, the worst thing is for for an artist to be in a household like this, grow up, go to college, become a lawyer or something. Now there's nothing wrong with lawyer, but it's, you know, something that's not in alignment with who they are. And then these people live depressed their whole life. And I know this because I did this, you know, like for a long time, I also come from an immigrant household. I was undocumented for about 18 years. So I had to, even though I, I always created, I also had to work really random jobs, right? to sustain myself undocumented in this country. So I understand both aspects, you know, even though that was welcomed and accepted in my household, I also grew up having to kind of like dole out that need to create, right? Because, you know, you need to survive. <clears throat> and I feel like a lot of those kids that come from these type of households, they, they it's almost like they they get split into, you know, you have to survive and go to college and la 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 I'm not saying that college you shouldn't go to college I'm saying like you have to go and study something that maybe your parents want you to study or get a job where you don't you're not really in alignment with and that what that does is it creates a, a, a issues with mental health I'm telling you because I, I went through this it creates a lot of mental health issues for for artists and um a lot of substance abuse comes from that too because it's like you're trying to detach from that uh, from a life that's not yours you know so for parents who have children like this, you know, it's so harmful to not cultivate that because that is who they are. There's not, if, even if you suppress that for years and years and years, that never goes away, right? And that need, you're an artist, you know, that need to create, that, sh that 
Can I curse? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I just think positive you until you pay attention to it. It's just, you, there's no going around it, right? So I was depressed for years and years and years and years and years. Why? Because I hated working for other people. Because all I wanted to do was create. If, the same thing with school. Like, I, I never, I hated school because I, all I wanted to do was draw and, like, create. And that's okay. And now I'm learning that that is okay to be that way because that is your preference, right? School systems don't really support that type of thinking, right? So I grew up feeling really ashamed of wanting to create all day. Yeah. And th- I thought there was something wrong with that. And that's why that's why I took other jobs and things like that. And then when I finally made the decision to make this type of transition, I was like, why did I do this sooner? This is crazy. Like, I'm like the happiest I've ever been. Um, I feel connected to everything. I am more myself now. I'm, I'm starting to, I'm learning about parts of myself that I that I have never seen just because, you know, I made a decision that, that this is what I wanted to do now. The thing is, what people also don't understand or, or may not understand or, or may not talk about fully is that when you decide to, to make this your lifestyle, there's a lot of sacrifice. And a lot of people don't want that either. So it's like the reality of it, not just with art, but with life, when you really want something and when you really want to create your own and, and curate your own life, there's a lot of sacrifice. And parents need to know that, and that is okay. That's not gonna make or break anyone. You'll get through that, you know? Um, and that's what I think a lot of fear from parents comes from that, from the fear that the kid's gonna go through stuff. But I mean, yeah. No, I appreciate I, you. Yeah, I appreciate you explaining you know. that because um, I have a daughter who's also artistic. Um, and her mother is not with it, you know, not with that shit. And then it took a lot of work on my behalf, trying to help her develop her art so that her mother can see, oh shit, there's, there's something going on here. You're right. Like educating the person that doesn't, like (laughs) you can't crucify them because they're not artists. Right. But it's about like bringing them kind of trying to bring them into your world and be like, cause that's what I did with the kid's parent. I was like, listen, this is. This is why she's so gifted at this, right? She's so gifted at this because I, I forgot how old she, I think she's like less than 10 years old. She knows color theory. This is something that people learn in college. You understand what I'm saying? Or like in high school, you know, like you're learning about like, not, not color theory, color harmony, right? This little girl is putting together pieces of art with colors that are in harmony with each other. And there's people there's people my age that draw that don't know how to do that. You know, so it's like this is then that that was one of the things. I'm like there's you know that's that that's that's a natural gift. Like not everyone so people go to school to understand how to do that. So it's about not being like, hey, you know, why don't you support no like let me educate you on what it is that's happening with your daughter right now and, and why why you need to pay attention to this. And my, my most important thing that they should understand is like mental health is tied into that. You know what I mean? And uh, if you if you care about your children, which I'm sure every parent does, then you want the best for them. And the best for them is to cultivate what they like, you know, what the things that they're naturally good at instead of like force feeding them a life that's not really in alignment with who they are, you know? Yeah, because then we all, in the end, realize that we were struggling to just express ourselves. I've been struggling my whole life, and that's because I've had to, in some ways, in 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 when I've had to do other jobs, like working for other people, I've had to come and kind of numb out who I really am to fit into. And it's like some people are just not meant to fit in molds, and some people are content with you know being uh, working a nine to five. There's people that are made for this. And there's people that are made for that. And not saying there's nothing wrong with a nine to five. I'm saying like we have to start to acknowledge the fact that that not everyone is meant to do these type of jobs or or go to school or like things like that. It's okay if you're not meant for those things because you can thrive outside of that. Yeah, you know? it's, it's very true. There are options. That's yes. that's yeah, Especially a lot of now. options. Oh my god, now <laughs> we have an open platform to do whatever we want. Yeah, you know. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about um, 
or giving us some examples of people or artwork that has influenced you from a younger age all the way till now? Well, the first and foremost is my father. Like, I grew up around his art. I didn't understand that as a kid because it's very ab- abstract. So I was like, oh, my God, these things are creepy. You know, when, <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't understand not only the the concepts that he was drawing, but also, like, the respect that my father was getting from, you know, like, other artists and other people, right? So I didn't understand that. So growing up in that, in, in that it's, it was interesting because I did grow up around art. But I didn't learn to appreciate my father until now, where I, when I'm doing what he's doing, right? Would you um, share with us, like, any key moments in your career so far that maybe left you speechless or actually mattered in the whole sense of what's happening with your, your, your work? So, okay. The, the most surprising thing and the most, uh, the nicest thing that has kind of come out of what I'm doing is that I can give back. I didn't understand what people meant about giving back to the community or anything like that. But for me, being in a position where one, I make people happy, that is the best feeling in the world, right? Bring joy to people, et cetera, right? Two, like I've gotten to work with kids in the school and um, undocumented kids, right? And um, explaining my journey as someone who was undocumented and now is under DACA and things like that. I run my own business. Um, so those things really kind of stick out for me because I the last thing in my mind was that I will be going to a school and talking to children about being a, a woman of color who that owns a business that's undocumented. That, well, well not, I'm not undocumented now, but was undocumented for 18 years. Uh, that has been the most rewarding thing because I love what I do. But art can sometimes be some like a very selfish thing because it's like about your about you and what you're putting out, right? So when you put in the in the mix, uh, bringing maybe children or, or a community that needs some sort of guidance or something like that, then it makes everything it, that that's like the equalizer. It brings everything back to neutral. You know, it's not just about you at this point, and and. I listen to like motivational stuff every, like every morning as soon as I wake up I listen to a, for three years I've been doing this for at least 15 20 minutes of morning with breakfast nothing gets done before this and there was this there's this guy that um I don't know if you ever heard of Eric Thomas but he's a, a motivational speaker that was like homeless and etc so he was saying that when you have a goal or a dream sorry Things have to be, you have to find a why. And the why has to be something like bigger than who you are or what you're trying to do. Like it, ha- it can't be about you because then you, you run out of gas eventually, you know? And for me, it's like, okay, if I do more and I can grow more and stuff like that, then what else can I do for people like myself? Or how can I be like uh, an example for w- women of color that want to own a business or like kids that are undocumented that are, are that have a fear of not being able to succeed because they don't have these papers and they're creatives or even if they're not creatives. But if I would have known what I know now back then, I would have not even worried, I wouldn't have even worried about not having papers or whatever, or not being uh, considered documented in the country because I don't, I have now a, a work permit, which is what I suffered so much for, for, for years and years and I don't even use it because I run my own business. You know, so these are the things that are like a, kind of like a mind fuck. It's like, yo, like I spent years suffering to have this piece of paper and now I own my own business and I don't even use it. You know, the universe works. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, these are like mental blocks that we kind of create, you know? So it, 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 for me, it's about giving back and, and, Maybe um, helping people not make maybe the same mistakes I've made or giving them some sort of hope that, you know, things are, are things are what you make it like you are literally in control of whatever it is that you do, you know? Yeah. So no. that's a, those, those are things that are meaningful to me, you know? No, that's awesome. Um, I was going to ask you. Um, well, I was first. I was going to say that I've always had my toe in the creative space, mm-hmm. um, especially in the New York City scene. Right. Most more into music. I used to do um, music production and stuff back in the day, and music management. Um, I 
I feel, <laughs> I feel like I, I agree with you that the energy of art, music, and all that does seem more selfless lately than it's ever been. Right. Would you agree with that? Yes. I think we have a platform now where it's like, I think we understand now how um, influential our art can be. And this is why, like, when we went into quarantine, I was like, you know, I don't want to create a lot of art that has to do with quarantine stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't want to keep contributing to something. Like, those, that thing stresses, stresses anybody out, right? So even if it's something cute that has to do with the coronavirus or whatever, for me, it was like, I, since I have the power to create and I have the power to influence in some way the people that are following me on my page, I don't want to add stress, even if it's just like a little second of like minuscule moment of like, oh yeah, we're in the middle of this thing right now. So I think because we are more conscious of how, when we are in social media and things like that, how much power, even if you have two followers, you're, you have the power to influence these two people, right? So I think people are becoming more conscious of what it is that comes out of them. You know, not just art, but just more aware that, you know, things do affect other people and they're, we're all like, like intertwined somehow. And I think artists are becoming a little bit more responsible, maybe. And some, some aren't, some are like exploiting that, the fact that, that you know, there is a lot of power in that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say the majority were becoming a little bit more like, okay, so this is very powerful. You can influence anyone with music. You can change someone's mood with music. You can change someone's mood with art, like in, instantaneously. So, I think people are becoming more aware of that. Awesome, very awesome. Um, what, where do you, what are your goals, or where do you see yourself um, professionally in the future? Like, what are you trying to, what are you trying to, what is that trying to look like? Um, you know, like I, <laughs> I'm a big dreamer, right? So it's, um, I, it's almost like crazy you know like i'm a little nuts like you have to be a little bit nuts right so short term opening up my own shop you know like a like a like i really want to print shop because i saw because i like i love like print work and things like that so maybe a, a small print shop uh novelty stuff that is like short short term stuff long term i don't really want to talk about it <laughs> because those things you know they're they're cooking but um but I, the one thing that I can say is do more more stuff for the community. That for sure. The other stuff is just you know more like business related stuff. So I'm like you know they're they're still simmering in the back. But um, that I, I do want to open up a, like a retail thingy, a retail shop. Awesome. So come and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Now that you actually mentioned the word business, that's yeah. the majority of my business. Uh, my small business is. Um, helping people with their businesses. Um, right. I used to be a multiple business owner and do all that stuff. But what I ended up doing now is I said, you know what, I want to be creative. So I started being creative and then getting into the creative space and then getting into the creative business space. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm realizing in the creative space is that people like myself on a small scale and even people on you guys who are even better designers and all that stuff on a larger scale are being oh. used and abused when it comes to their small businesses or even their talent. Right. What, what would you advise in some business sense that you might have learned that you can give to us so that way people who are watching this, a lot of them are creatives, um, can actually say, oh, I didn't think about that or, oh, I should do that or pay attention to that? I think just with anything, any type of like relationship that you have with anyone, right? You have to know what it is that you can do, what it is that you can put out there, right? And what it is that you're not willing to, uh, you know, so that that will change for for any for anyone, you know, right? So it's it's about what you can and cannot do, right? Once you understand what you can and cannot do business wise, then you have to literally. This is what I did: lay lay out a script of what it is that, for example, for an illustration, this is what I can and cannot do, right? And and that list changes over time because there's things that you learn along the way, but you have to be really assertive about uh, that list uh, or, or that your ground rules for working with other people, right? Um, also, take your business seriously. Don't, you know, friends, and, and that's great. It's great that, that people want to work with you, especially people that are very close. But, you know, at the end of the day, 
it is a business. It's not a, a social club. It's not like a free for all. Uh, if you want to grow your business, you have to treat it as such. So there has those rules have to apply to every single person, right? You, however, choose if you want to work for free for Josefa over there, then you work for free for. But that's that comes to your terms. I mean, that comes that comes with your term. Like you decide to do that, right? Don't allow people to haggle with your prices because you you have to set the tone. It's about being assertive about your work, uh, putting value in your work, and understanding where it is that you fit. Work, uh, with your work, like the value of it, right? So the other thing is like if you're a, a growing business and you're charging something that someone that has been in this industry for seven years charges, then then you have to kind of like check yourself as well. Like you have to be really grounded and also honest with yourself about where it is that you are at, you know. And and when you when you know that, that's when you can set those rules. Right, the rules will change. You know, supply and demand. You know, the rules change. The more, the more there is, uh, you know, people hitting you up in your DMs, and that, then you can, then you tweak that, you tweak your prices and things like that. But it all boils down to respecting your work, because if you don't respect your work, nobody else is going to respect it, and people will try to haggle you. This is, I deal with this every single day. Every single day, but it come, now I don't care. Now it becomes second nature because at the end of the day, you know, when I first started, I would bend over backwards for everybody. And then I would be angry and resentful, and then I just didn't want to work, right? Um, value your work, but also work on your craft every single day to get better, to be able to, to change those rules, right? Because... Yes, it's great to value your work, but if your skills are not quite there yet, then, you know, this, that's something that, that you also have to take serious, you know? Um, but when it comes to money and stuff like that, or, or just the, the business and the, the disrespect, because I, I, there's a lot of disrespect, there's a lot of uh, people that don't quite understand what you're doing or how it works, uh, you have to get some balls and literally just be very assertive about protecting your craft. You know? No, you're 100 percent right, and I thank you for the perspective. I, I love giving that perspective to people because a lot of people don't understand how to do that for themselves in the creative it's, space or the regular business space, whatever it is. But they just don't. Because a lot of artists are not business people. We're not. We don't care about that. I I can tell you this: if I could do without that, I would be happier, right? Because it's draining, right? But it's part, if you, that's the price kind of that you have to pay for now, if you want to keep working for yourself, you know, you have to become a business person, right? Um, we're not good at that. We, that's why some, most, like, people that are really, they have managers and things like that to handle all that, like, excess stuff. Um, and, I, and, and sometimes we devalue our work because we don't care about business, the business aspect of it. But I saw my father go through so much because of that so i promised myself that i wasn't going to repeat the same stuff um and to, and to this day I also you know my father is like the epitome of an artist like he don't he doesn't give a shit about business or like making money or like he doesn't give a shit he just wants to draw and paint all day um but when it comes to business i'm like that you can't do this with 50 years of experience or whatever you know like this is not acceptable and he, it's almost like a child. Like he, he's like, yeah, but I want to draw. I know, you know. So I learned a lot from him, from watching him make a lot of maybe mistakes with the business. So I have that perspective mainly because of my father. You know. No, that's awesome. You're you're very blessed, and I'm glad you gave me that perspective uh, so that we can share to them because I do that a lot. I'm actually managing some artists right now, or in the midst of you know trying to manage an artist because. Sometimes I, I interviewed someone and sometimes the best answer also is just reaching out to people who know how to do it. Right. Get, getting a good team together and actually saying, hey, guys, you know, let's handle this while I go do this. And it's like that's not a problem because business owners, even a, a bodega that opens up has that structure, right, where it's like the, the guy who runs it and then everyone else who's working under him. And that is another thing. When your business, ideally, you will have someone for every, like, skill set, Right. That that would be the, the most ideal workflow. Like you draw this person takes care of social media, blah blah blah, right? 
Um, now is when I'm finally delegating some of my excess work. Like my sister now is working with me. But the first two years, I was like, I don't know if I can keep this up. Like, I don't know if I can keep doing this on my own because it's so much. And then it's about also like letting some of that control go. But there's no one that I trust more than my sister. And it's about delegating. Okay, now I have this excess work. You do this so I can now think of ways to grow in different ways, blah, blah, blah. But you're right. It's about that. It's about finding someone that can do that specific job. So the other person can just do what they do best, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, we're running short on time. I don't want to keep you all day. But I do want to ask you something, just because, like I said, I was into music before. How did you get into the Harry fraud? Um, if you wouldn't mind telling me that story. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so, okay, so I was doing music for, I would say, three or four years prior to, to meeting him. And... He's a friend. Okay, so my father, when he was a painter, um, in here in the in the states, he uh, this lady brought him over to go to like all the galleries in Soho back in like the eighties or whatever the seventies, and she had a son. She gave birth to this guy. Years later, like when I was like in my early twenties, he finally finds me on MySpace looking for my father. So me and this person, we're like, we're cosmically connected, bro. We're like, we were supposed to meet, right? So he, we meet and we are like brother, sister. We're just like soul, like everything's similar. My pa- both of our parents knew each other. They're both artists. We, we meet each other through MySpace. He's in Dominican Republic in art school. I'm in Miami. And we, our lives are almost like identical, like parallel, right? He's also an amazing musician, painter, blah, blah, blah. We meet, blah, blah, blah. And that is, was Harry Fraud's good friend back in the day. They grew up together. So I was doing music. And then I moved to New York City. We all become, like, biggest like family, like, best friends. We hang out all the time. Then we become, like, this little crew of people of that make music together blah blah and at that time fraud had a studio in dumbo and i think he was recording some in another studio and i was with his engineer uh red uh walrus <laughs> so we were recording me and my friend Josama, who was the person that introduced me to fraud we we're recording on uh like an ep together and i was just like you know what we were fucking around and fraud is like yo if i finish i'll do some weird shit blah blah, blah in spanish and I do a whole skit, just improvise in Spanish about having a, a music class that's uh, given by Harry Fraud, right? So we record this big thing. It was like maybe like 10 minutes long. And Fraud, I guess, comes in the next day. And here's the whole, like all the shenanigans that we, what we were doing. This is prior to like him blowing up, you know? Like this is him in the midst of blowing up, right? Um, he was already working with like C's and French Montana before Fr- French Montana, you know, blew up as well and he was like yo can i can i use that i'm like yeah what little did i know that this was gonna be like his stamp right I'm like yeah for sure blah, blah blah and the rest is history then it became the staple in in his in his songs thank you for that i appreciate yeah. that yeah because people like me like we we appreciate little of stories course. like that it's just a it's such a and when i hear it i don't think about like hey i'm on the it's just like oh it reminds me of like that when i was in the studio and dumbo and like family shit you know like yeah you got a personal story behind that's awesome yeah, man. <laughs> all right well i i really appreciate you being on the channel thank i don't want to hold you back anymore uh-huh. Before we go, though, just tell us one more time where we can find you. And then when you after that, to give us like a quick send off of motivation for people that may be watching. So that way they can be motivated to do things for themselves and and maybe progress their work. Yes. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter at Fanesha Fabre, F-A-N-E-S-H-A-F-A-B-R-E. Those two actually you could Google me anywhere, but those two that's where you can find me. And then on Instagram, there's a link in my bio to my shop and things like that. Um, motivational stuff, I would say for any artist out there that's trying to do something, um, do not stray from that desire. That desire is there for a reason. Um, it will lead you, that is the road to like your happiness. And I'm telling you because I've experienced that. I've experienced not being happy and I've experienced being happiness. 
of being happy, that is a road to your f feeling complete and and in your like yourself. Um, and surround yourself with people who honor that. You know, you might not find that at home, unfortunately, but you can find that with your friends and the communities of other artists. So make sure that you keep good people around you to keep you kind of going forward. That's very important. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. This has been uh, this has been awesome. I, I really I, I follow your work. I think you're great. Um, the whole Harry Fraud story, like all of that stuff, <laughs> amazing. And it's crazy because I, I I look up to your work and then you find out all this other background about yourself, and it's like it makes it even better and sweeter, oh, right? So yeah, I really appreciate that so much. I'm gonna put all your information below yeah. so that way they can reach out. Um, and to my audience, thank you so much for uh, watching again. Please visit us at therootwave.com to check out other interviews for the Perspective Series. And Fanesha, thank you so much again. And we'll, we'll see each other soon. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Have a good one.